Okay, we're looking at page 232 in your, reading, in your ready books. Of course, I recognize that you can't really read what you see on the screen, so you are going to need to follow along on your papers as well. Um, the word problem at the top says, tomatoes have come in different sizes and types. Miss May's class weighed several different tomatoes to near one eighth of a pound. The results are shown on our, lawn, on our line plot below. Use the line plot to describe the weights varied. So remember that a line plot is much like a number line in that it's divided into equal intervals and that each mark above it is a data mark representing how many, the frequency goes for that in this case, how many tomatoes are at that weight. So when I'm looking at this, I should notice, well, what are my intervals divided into first of all? And luckily in this instance, what you're going to do to see that is you're going to start at your whole number of zero and you're going to count your intervals into your next whole number of one. That will tell you what your unit fraction is, what is the unit being divided into. So my intervals have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So since I have eight intervals, my line plot is divided into eighths. Now you can see that this says one eighth, but these are not all into eighths. So before you even really get started, you should turn them all into equivalent fractions with that common denominator of eight. So one fourth, one fourth is equivalent to how many eighths? What would I need to do in order to come up with that equivalent fraction to turn them all into eighths? So again, that common denominator is going to be eight. What would I do to go from four to eight? Well, I know I'm going from a smaller of four to a bigger of eight. So when I'm going from a smaller to a larger number, I am multiplying. So four times what is going to get me to eight? Hmm. Four times two. And when I did that denominator, I also need to do my numerator. So four times two got me to eight. I need to do that same thing to my to my one, to my numerator. So two eighths is also equivalent to one fourth. So I'm just going to focus on that two eighths now. Three eighths is already an eighth, so I don't need to do anything to it. But here again, I have that unlike denominator of two. And I need to again get it to eighths. So what am I going to do to go from two to eight? Again, I'm going from a smaller to a larger, so I'm multiplying, I'm not dividing. Two times what is eight? Hopefully you recognize that two times four is eight. Again, these are small numbers, so we should be pretty fluent with our equivalent fractions in this instance. And if I went, did two times four to my denominator, well then I'm going to do that to my numerator as well. So one times four is four. My equivalent fraction for one half is four eighths. Again, four is half of eight, so complete logic makes sense. This is an eighth. Oh, three fourths. Again, it's not an eighth. What did I do to go from four to eight? Hmm. Four times what is eight? Hmm. Oh, right. Four times two is eight. And what I do to the bottom, I must also do to the top. Three times two. Hmm. Three times. All three times two is six. So three fourths is equivalent to six eighths. So now I've kind of got those like denominators that are going to actually help me to answer the questions. Now, I'm not going to move the screen. You're going to have to really look at the bottom because I want, I want our focus to be on looking at the line plot. You can look at the questions on your sheet and just follow along. So the first question says, um, the greatest number of tomato weight. Now, notice the keyword in there says the greatest number of tomatoes weigh. Not the greatest weight of the tomato, which would have been 7 eighths, but the greatest number of. Um, so finding the greatest number of is talking about your frequency. I have four of this weight, three of this weight, two, and so on and so forth. So which one has the largest number of data points? Well, for letter A, you can see that the largest number is right here. There are four that weigh one-eighth, so the greatest number of tomatoes weigh one-eighth. Now going on and looking at your next question, question two, which best describes how the weights are spread out? Circle the best description. So when I'm looking at how they spread out, I'm looking at, well, where's the highest concentration of data points? So certainly not here. There's only a few on this end. And there's a decent amount in the middle. But where's the greatest concentration? And you can see that it's really in this piece of it. So when looking at your answer choices, you have clustered between 0 and 1 half. So this piece. 
cluster between one half and one pound, that piece, or spread out between zero and one, which would be that they're just kind of like equally throughout kind of. And you can see that really the concentration is in this area, there's a lot of data points on this side, whereas on this side, there's not too many, so it's certainly not spread out throughout. It really, the concentration is from zero to one half of a pound. Now looking at question, question C, are most of the tomatoes on the heavier or lighter side of the scale? So most, you know, again, it's looking at the frequency. Where do I see the most data marks? And I can see that most of the data marks are on this side. And um, I'm noticing that zero pounds is pretty light and that one pound is your heavier. So most of your data marks are going to be on your lighter side. The highest frequency are the lighter sized tomatoes. Maybe they didn't have good fertilizer. Maybe they didn't grow well. Maybe Ms. Foreman forgot to water them. Who knows? But again, they're on the lighter side. Looking at letter D, are there any tomatoes whose weight is very different from the rest? If so, what does it weigh? Well, again, I'm noticing that the concentration of them are between zero and a half pound. So most of them are right in here. However, there's like this little odd man out here. So this one is not really, um, it is very different from the rest. It's not like the rest, it is a little bit heavier. So when it's saying, are most of the tomatoes have a heavier or lighter end of the scale, we decide that they're on the lighter, but that 7 eighths is on the, actually the heavier side. So it is different from the rest, and what, uh, if so, what does it weigh? It weighs 7 eighths. Look at letter E. Letter E says, what is the difference between the weight of the heaviest and lightest tomatoes? So first of all, let's take a moment and box that key operation word. What is that key operation word in that word problem? What is it telling us? What operation is it telling us to perform? Okay, so you should box the word different, which is telling you to subtract. So I'm needing to subtract the heaviest from the lightest. And there are two ways that you can perform this operation. One of our friends told us that if we want to find the, um, the difference, we could subtract, but they had also really quickly realized that I could actually count my intervals from the heaviest to the lightest and that would tell me the difference without even having to subtract. But when you're doing that, you have to be careful to make sure you're counting your unit fractions. What did we say the intervals for this were? In this instance, we said the intervals were 1 eighth. So if I wanted to do it that way, to find the difference, I would count 1 eighth, 2 eighths, 3 eighths, 4 eighths, 5 eighths, 6 eighths. The difference is 6 eighths going from your heaviest to your lightest. Again, it's not talking about frequency, it's talking about the heaviest weight to the lightest weight, having nothing to do with how many data points. And we got six eighths. However, as fluent as we are now in fractions, you should also have been able to quickly um, just do easy subtraction. So here's my heaviest, and here's my lightest. And now what I'm going to be doing is I'm just going to be taking and subtracting those. These are really simple numbers. These are not numbers that you're going to see on FSA because you know on FSA you're going to see like a lot of whole numbers, 10 and 1 eighth and so on and so forth with the whole numbers included as well and you would also have to do a lot of regrouping. So this really is as basic as it's going to get. 7 eighths, take away 1 eighth. We get the exact same answer. We have those common denominators so all we need to do in this instance is to subtract our numerator. So we get six eighths, but mm -mm, that's, that's not going to work for me because that's a fourth grade scale. What do I know about six eighths? What is six eighths equivalent to? Hmm. You know what? I'm not really sure. Oh, you know what I recognize? I recognize that my numerator and my denominator are both even. So they could both be divided by two. So if I divided six by two, I would get three. And if I divided eight by two, I would get four. So the difference between my heaviest and my lightest is three-fourths. Again, you could have counted your intervals and got to six-eighths, but you would still need to go down to that lesser equivalent fraction because that's a more friendly number that we're familiar with. Looking at your last question on this page, letter F says, how many times the weight of the lightest tomato is the heaviest tomato? So again, I need to go back and I need to look at that data on my line plot. I'm trying to figure out how many times greater is the lightest than the heaviest. So my lightest is 1 eighth. 
and my heaviest is 7 eighths. So I need to figure out what would I multiply, what whole number would I multiply by 1 eighth to get 7 eighths. Now as a friendly reminder, anytime we're multiplying by a whole number, it would have been this whole number times my numerator, um, and then my denominator would stay the same. So what can I multiply by 1 to get 7? Well, that's a pretty easy one, right? 1 times 7 is 7, your denominator would stay the same. So whole number times your numerator, denominator stays the same, it's 7 times greater. Let's go ahead and go on now. Let's look at page 233. When I look at page 233, I'm just going to slide right over here. I'm going to read the word problem, and then I'm going to shift up the page that you can see the rest of it. Um, so the question says at the top, plotting data on the line graph helps you to get a picture of what the data look like and how the data is, are spread out. Each X represents one piece of data, so the taller stacks of X's mean more data with the same volume. You can use the tomato weight line plot to talk about the distribution of weight. Okay, and distribution is a key word on FSA, so I'm just going to like really focus on it. Distribution is how they spread out and how they cluster in the data. A lot of times we're going to use distribution to divide. In this instance, we're just going to really use the distribution, how is it spread out, to just kind of generalize a summary on what I see. So I'm going to move my line plot up so that I can see it very clearly, and then I'll raise the board, but I just want to make sure it's in good view. Okay. So the first thing it says is you can also use operations with data values to come up with the ways to describe the data. Subtract 7 eighths minus 1 eighth to find the difference between the weights of the heaviest and lightest tomato. The difference tells us how the weight varies. So we did that same operation on the last page. Difference was telling you to subtract, and that was the operation that we did, in fact, perform. Looking at the next one, it says divide. 7 eighths divided by 1 eighth tells us the heaviest tomato is 7 times lighter Seven, is seven times heavier than the lightest tomato. This gives us a comparison from the least to greatest. Now we sort of did that. I did um, one eighth times what equals seven eighth. So all they did is they flipped it into the reciprocal. They changed my multiplication into division, and they uh, then you can solve for that seven whole the same way. When I look down at the bottom, though, it's giving me a reflection question. So I want you to take a moment and reflect on your learning. Suppose you have one more tomato of, with a weight of three-fourths pounds. Would that change how much the weight varies? Explain. So one more tomato with a weight of three-fourths. When I look at my actual line plot and I go to the three-fourths mark, so again, so I suppose I have one more here. Is that going to change the data when we're looking at it? Uh, yeah, it's going to change how much it varies because right now I see a huge concentration on here and it's going to go right there. It's going to yes and no because yes, my distribution is still on that other side. It's still on that lighter side. But if I would ever want to um, find an average, it's going to make the average go up a little bit. But my distribution really is still going to be on that lighter side. Okay, look at page 234. We're going to kind of now go ahead and connect what we've learned today. So read through the problem below. Then explore different ways to understand how to make a line plot. Kira bought a bag of stickers to decorate her scrapbook pages. She sorted the stickers by width. She counted the stickers and found 18 stickers that are one fourth inch wide, 11 stickers that are one half inch wide, and 14 stickers that are one eighth inch wide. Kira wants to see the distribution of the width so that she can plan to use how the sticker plan how to use the stickers. Make a line plot of the data. So in this instance, you're really going to need a separate sheet of paper and actually to make the line plot because there really just isn't room in this book. Um, if you were lucky, you could use this tiny little margin at the very, very bottom of your sheet 
234 at the bottom. You have this space, you could use that. You just need to make sure that your, um, that your data points are small and that you're hugging tight to the bottom of the page in order to actually make that line flat. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now, but what I want rec you to recognize before we actually do that is to look at that table again under model it. You have your stickers are 1 8th, 1 4th, and 1 half for the widths. So we can't plot that without um, having those common denominators. We can't compare unlike units. So I really do have to come up with that common denominator. So my denominators are 4, 8, and 2. What would be my common denominator? Right, your common denominator should be eighths, so you need to go ahead and rewrite those in terms of eighths. So you have one eighth, and that's perfect, but one fourth, I want you in your table to write one fourth is equivalent to how many eighths. So again, that table under model it, one fourth equals how many eighths? Right, four times two is eight, so one times two, one fourth is equivalent to two eighths. Again, make sure you're writing that in your table. Then right below it, you have one half. How many eighths are in one half? So again, one half is equivalent to four eighths. Four is half of eight. So now you can create that line plot. So when I create that line plot, what I'm gonna to need to do again is determine what intervals I should be dividing it into. And you should realize that your unit fraction is eighths. You need to cut your, um, your line plot into eighths. So I'm gonna draw my line. I'm gonna label a zero and I'm going to label one whole. And now I'm gonna go through and cut it into eighths. So I always go halfway, so it's a half and a half. And then I do a mark through each of those halves, and now I have fourths. And then going through each of your fourths is what's gonna give you your eighths. So you should now have eight points. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So eight eighths is your whole. And now going through and actually plotting that data from the chart above, from the table above, where it's telling you to model it. So one eighth, we would then need to make, uh, at the one eighth mark, we'd need to make those 14 data points. So this is why I said, if you're wanting to use this space, you're really gonna need to make your axis small to get them all. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, Whew, I barely made it. But again, that's the first eighth, so that is your one eighth. Now again, going to that table, one fourth, well, we decided the equivalent to one fourth was two eighths. So looking for that two eighths on your line plot and then making those 18 down marks. Who knows if I'm gonna get it there, but I'm gonna try. So this is one eighth and this is two eighths. So again, one fourth is equivalent to two eighths and I need to make 18 data marks there to show my frequency. One, two, three, four, five, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. So I have my 18 data marks there on the one fourth, and I'll give you a moment to catch up. But as you're catching up, I'm gonna go ahead and continue talking. Now on your table, again, from above, where it says model it, one half we decided was equivalent to four eighths. I'm looking and seeing how many data points does it tell me to put at that four eighths mark, and it has 11. So one eighth, two eighths, three eighths, four eighths, again, equivalent to your one half, I need to have 11 data marks. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. Boom, I've got my 11 data marks, and now I'm able to model. And I really stress creating this because on FSA, it's likely that you're gonna have to actually Remember from when we did the iReady, you're going to have to actually drag it and create it. That was our standard to create a line plot. So I went through and I created it, and now they've made some generalizations about it. The greatest number of stickers is at the 18, which you can again visually see, and the least number is the 11 stickers, which is at your 4 eighths. So being able to go through and label those and um, have those in order to, in order to help you plot that on your line plot. Look at your next page. Your next page gives you a little bit of information in which it states that on page 235, it says, what scale is used for the line plot Explain. Well, we realized that we had to have that common denominator, and so that common denominator had to be an eighth. That was our least common multiple. So the scale that is used is eighths because we had to use that least common multiple to create our common denominators. 
Now the next one says, how many axes will you draw above each width? Again, I'm on page 235, number three. And actually, I could probably move it over now because I probably don't necessarily need that line plot in view now. So when I'm looking at this one, how many axes will you draw above each width? Ah! <laughs> Just kidding. At above each width, the 1 8 inch mark, how many did I draw at my 1 8? Well, when I'm looking again, look at that table, or you could count them again. When you're at that 1 8 on your table, you were supposed to draw 14. On your 1 4 inch, how many did you draw? Again, you should have drawn 18 because that had the highest frequency. On your 3 8 you should have had nothing. There was nothing indicated on there that told you to draw a specific number. However, on your 1 half, how many did you draw? Again, refer to the table on the last page. You should have drawn 11 data points on that page. All right, number four. Use the number line at the right to make a line plot with the sticker width. So here is the line plot at the right, and I'm trying to slide the book over, so sorry for the delay. And I'm trying not to <laughs> sneeze, but there it goes anyways. Oh, well. Can't get it in range. Oh well, you know what I'm gonna do to get in range? I'm just gonna move the camera. So let's see. Uh, there we go. Let's see, sort of. Okay, hopefully it sticks. Ah. And I'm sorry about the little spot. That would be my uh, that would be my light from my from my projector. So you got that there. That's fine. All right, so I'm going to use a number line over here in order to plot some information. So it says you use the number line at the right to make the line plot. And we actually already made the line plot over on page 234 at the bottom. But now I don't want us to do it together. I want you to use the information and I want you to make it on your own. Again, the information you wrote on um, number three, you wrote how many data points. And you also have your chart on page 234 to refer, to refer back to. So go ahead and do that right now as well. You can go ahead, pause it if you need to. But try to create that on your own now and see, can you do it without us doing it together? Notice that there's only went from zero to one half because one half was the greatest data mark. I did zero to one. It really depends what you're supplied with when you're doing FSA or when you're um, getting ready into middle school, what they give you to start with. Number five says, Based on how the data how the data are distributed, which is one conclusion you can make about Kier stickers. So there are diff lots of different conclusions. So you know you might take this time and pause and discuss some of the conclusions that you could draw. I could really say that the data is very heavy between the one eighth and one half. There's nothing greater than a half. I could say that right in the middle of one eighth and one half at that one fourth mark, it's really heavily concentrated. It's even more concentrated as well between just the one eighth and one fourth. The one half that heavy, that higher with the stickers has the least. So there's many, many generalizations that you could make. It, it's just a great discussion to have, but being able to come up with those different conclusions and confer together. Number six, how do you use a line plot to show the distribution of measurement data? And we have talked about that again and again, so take a moment and really think about that. Maybe this is a time again where you would pause and have that discussion, but you would be able to see where the higher concentration is on that distribution. So by plotting those points and seeing where the highest um, data is recorded will help you to see where the heavier distribution is or to see if it's on more towards the lighter, the the less width or the greater width side. In this case, it was really high, just in the middle of the two. And then looking at the bottom, it says, use the data you just learned about creating line plots to solve the problem. Show your work on a separate sheet of paper. Um, I'm pretty sure you have room at the bottom of 235, but if you feel like you need to use a separate sheet of paper, by all means, go ahead and make that separate sheet, use that separate sheet of paper. But it says, at a health fair, Sean recorded the number of cups of sugar per gallon 
of, for several different sports drinks and sodas. Make a line plot of the data. So again, I'm going to give you a few heads up, but you really need to be able to do this on your own for life because we make these all the time in real life. Like, it's what I do on my weekends for fun. I'm making line plots and no. Okay. Well, anyways, you need to, first of all, find your least common multiple that you can use to create your least common denominator. In this case, you probably don't need to list your multiples. You should probably recognize that your common denominator is going to be eight. But then going back and creating those equivalent fractions with your common denominators of 8. You also need to identify when you're creating that line plot number line, you need to identify what is the least point that you need to start at and the greatest point. So go through your numbers and find the smallest number, your least number. Oh, you know what? I see my least number is 1. So my line plot can start at 1. I don't need to start all the way at 0. I could just start at 1. I also um, need to find my greatest number that I have to end with. At, I mean, you can go further than that, but the greatest number you at least have to go to is 3 and 1 fourth. So I'm going to put a 3 here and going a little bit further. So this would be my 2. Now again, deciding your common denominator is 8, you should recognize that your line plot, each hole, needs to be divided into terms of 8s. So taking between each hole and cutting them in half, then fours, then going in half of each of the fours to eight. So seven marks to make eight hops between each hole, and then plotting that. So go ahead, make that number line, plot it, and then think about di different generalizations that you can make. So this is the time that I want you to make that on your own, but then after you make it, take some time and reflect on it on your own, and then maybe share those answers with a partner, and then go whole class with what will work. And I'm gonna erase this from my book because this is not reusable. All right, anyways, thank you, enjoy.